OK, alors, on peut avoir les technologies reproductives. Qu'est-ce qui arrive quand on veut reproduire, mais on a de la difficulté? Premièrement, je vais donner une perspective catholique. L'Église a plusieurs enseignements moraux, mais ils ne sont pas toujours très accessiblement écrits. Uh, they talk about encyclicals and things like that, and you start to read them, and it feels like you need a master's in theology to, to get what the hell is being said. Um, le catechisme, c'est une collection de tous les politiques spécifiques et les positions morales officielles du Vatican. Uh, j'ai parlé au centre-ville et um, j'ai ces sections d'un catechisme écrit pour adolescents, a teen catechism. So, it's in English because this in French would be just rough. Uh, so, what can a childless couple do? So, married couples who suffer from infertility can accept any medical assistance that does not contradict the dignity of the human person, the rights of the child to be conceived, and the holiness of the sacrament of matrimony. So, these numbers here come from, like, the official sections of the catechism. If you want to know more about any of this, if you just Google Catechism 2375, uh, like I will do right now. Uh, Catechism 2375. And look, that's from Vatican.va. So 2375. Research aimed at reducing human sterility is to encourage on condition, blah, blah, blah. And then 2379. So... The catechism is kind of broad and sometimes difficult to understand. If you want to go for it, you can. So there is no absolute right to have a child. Every child is a gift from God. Married couples to whom this gift has been denied, even though they have exhausted all permissible medical means of assistance, can take in foster children or adopt children or become socially involved in some other way. For instance, by caring for abandoned children. What is the church's judgment on surrogate motherhood and artificial fertilization? All assistance in conceiving a child through research and medicine must stop when the common bond of parenthood is loosened and destroyed by the intrusion of a third person or when the conception becomes a technological act outside of sexual union and marriage. Again, sections from the Catechism. Out of respect for human dignity, the church cannot approve of the technologically assisted conception of a child through heterologous or homologous insemination. Every child has in God's plan the right to have a father and a mother to know his parents, and if at all possible, to grow up surrounded by their love. Artificial insemination with the sperm of another man, which is heterologous insemination, also destroys the spirit of marriage, in which husband and wife have the right to become a father or mother only through the other spouse. But even homolog homologous insemination, in which the sperm comes from the husband, makes a child the product of technological procedure and does not allow it to originate from the loving union of a personal sexual encounter. If the child becomes a product, however, then that leads immediately to cynical questions about the product quality and product liability. The church also rejects pre-implantation diagnosis, which is carried out for the purposes of killing imperfect embryos. Surrogate motherhood, too, in which an artificial conceived embryo is implanted into another woman, is contrary to human dignity. Okay. So basically, that says the church thinks what I'm going to talk to you about uh, is wrong. Uh, all right, but it's still important. Like, I, I have to teach you this as per the Saskatchewan curriculum. Um, and it's important for you to make uh, an informed decision on what you think is right or wrong. I would be shocked if any of us could read the catechism and not find at least one thing where we're like, really? Like, I, I mean, not all of us here are necessarily Catholic. Um, but, I mean, what does it mean to be Catholic? Do you have to believe in everything the catechism says? I'd say no. Um, and... I'm not trying to give a moral judgment on anything. Some of you may have been born through IVF or something like that. And that's, you, that's awesome. Um, I don't want anyone to feel ashamed of that in the class, but I do want to give the Catholic perspective. Um, alors, si tu veux plus de renseignements, tu peux lire le catechisme, comme j'ai dit, les paragraphes sont notés. 
Mais il y a aussi les encycliques Human Vitae et aussi Casti Knubite, which are awesome because they're written, uh, like those titles are Latin, so you know they're going to be super easy to read. So if you just Google it again, you can get straight up the encyclical, but it's a lot of text and it's a lot to go through and try to parse out. But that option, like I, if, if that's something that interests you, please do it. <coughs> Question. Okay. Il y a plusieurs raisons pourquoi on a besoin de l'aide avec la reproduction. L'infertilité est quand il y a de la difficulté uh, avec la reproduction et la cause peut être avec le corps, avec le pénis, mais aussi avec le corps, avec l'utérus. Uh, approximativement 15% des couples ont des problèmes d'infertilité. Certaines infections peuvent causer des problèmes avec la production de sperme. Uh, alors, ce sont, je m'excuse, des problèmes possibles avec le corps, avec le pénis. Uh, on peut avoir des difficultés avec l'éjaculation. En certains cas, l'éjaculation ne quitte pas le corps ou les sperme peuvent, sperme peuvent avoir des difficultés à nager. Uh, on peut avoir des problèmes d'hormones, des, um, yeah. uh, des problèmes possibles avec le corps, avec une utérus sont, uh, on peut avoir des désordres d'ovulation, on peut avoir des désordres d'hormones. Endometriosis, anyone heard that before? Oh, I'm reasonably certain I know what that is. I'm just going to Google it quickly to make sure. Uh, endometriosis. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. So, endometriosis is an often painful disorder in which tissue similar to the tissue that normally lines the inside of your uterus grows outside your uterus. Um, it involves your ovaries, fallopian tubes, and the tissue lining your pelvis. So that just sounds awful. Um, on peut aussi avoir PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome. Um, C'est pas mal commun, uh, mais on peut um, avoir des cysts, like cysts, uh, little, I guess, pockets that grow on the ovaries and disrupt ovulation. They can disrupt hormones. Uh, sometimes they can burst and, and cause abdominal pain. Um, but PCOS is way more common um, than you'd be led to believe with how little it is. Uh, prevalent. 4 to 12 percent of women have PCOS, they say. Um, alors, il y a toutes sortes de problèmes. Je ne vais pas les lister uh, parce qu'on ne on, on parle pas de pourquoi, mais vraiment quoi faire. Alors, on va discuter de uh, technologie reproductive. Le premier, c'est l'insémination. Uh, artificial. Insemination. Artificial insemination. Et la grande idée, c'est de placer du sperme dans l'utérus sans qu'il y ait de rapport sexuel. Alors, on prend un échantillon de sperme euh, qui est donné soit par un partenaire ou, ou par quelqu'un hors de la relation. Um, the catechism talked about, about uh, homolog hom homologous or heterogous. I can't remember the words they used. Heterologous or homologous. Um, souvent, la personne avec l'utérus est donnée des médicaments qui encouragent l'ovulation. Uh, on peut aussi utiliser des ultrasons pour vérifier l'ovulation. Um, 
et quand le temps est correct, on, on, on insère le sperme cliniquement. Et par cliniquement, je veux dire comme dans une clinique médicale. Alors, ceci surtout aide avec um, les difficultés d'infertilité avec le corps, avec une pénis, parce qu'on peut cho soit choisir de, du sperme qui est plus um, en santé, that would be the way to say it, um, et, et parce que en, en ce cas, c'est pas que nécessairement il y a un problème avec le corps, avec l'utérus, avec l'ovulation, tout ça. Le problème, c'est de, de connecter le sperme avec l'ovule. Oui. From what I read of this section of the catechism, the church is still against... Um, Here, because uh, like if, if you're married, having problems, you take sperm from um, the, the, the one and you combine it with the egg of the other, even though it's, it's DNA from these people who are presumably in a, a loving relationship. They say that this catechism says it makes the child a product of technological and does not allow it to originate from the loving union of a personal sexual encounter. Autre question. OK. Le deuxième processus, um, c'est fécondation in vitro, um, in vitro fertilization. Oops. Fertilization. Oh, no. um, IVF. Alors, c'est quand on stimule le processus ovulaire d'une femme pour produire des ovules matures. Uh, IVF, c'est un peu plus technique. Alors, c'est pour ça que on a ce vidéo. Alors, on va écouter le vidéo deux fois um, pour s'assurer que vous pouvez bien répondre à ces questions dans le paquet. No. In vitro fertilization is a process where a woman's eggs are fertilized outside her body, then placed back inside her body to help her get pregnant. A woman's reproductive system includes the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. During the monthly menstrual cycle, one of the ovaries releases an egg in a process called ovulation. After ovulation, the egg enters the fallopian tube. A woman is most likely to become pregnant if she has sex in the days just before, during, or right after ovulation. During this time, a sperm cell from a man's reproductive fluid, called semen, is able to fertilize the egg just inside the fallopian tube. As it travels along the fallopian tube, the fertilized egg, now called an embryo, loses the outer cells that nourished it in the ovary. The embryo passes from the fallopian tube into the uterus. In the uterus, the embryo sheds its protective outer layer, called the zona pellucida, in a process called zona hatching. Zona hatching is necessary for the embryo to implant in the tissue lining the uterus. During implantation, a connection between the woman and the embryo begins to grow. 
This organ, called the placenta, allows oxygen and nutrients to pass from her to the embryo. In vitro fertilization may be performed if a woman has been having trouble getting pregnant, a condition known as infertility. Or it may be done if a woman wants to have a child without a male partner. Before in vitro fertilization, a woman will receive fertility medication that causes more than one egg to grow and mature in the ovaries. A man will provide a semen sample so that the healthiest sperm can be collected for fertilization. If the male partner is completely infertile, also known as sterile, or the woman doesn't have a male partner, a donor may be arranged to provide sperm for this process. In vitro fertilization consists of three main procedures. Follicle aspiration, fertilization, and embryo transfer. During the first procedure, called follicle aspiration, eggs will be harvested from the ovaries. At the beginning of this procedure, an ultrasound probe will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that her doctor can view her ovaries. Inside the ovaries, the doctor will look for follicles. Each follicle is a fluid-filled sac that contains an egg. Then the doctor will insert a long, thin needle into and through the wall of her vagina and guide it to the ovary. A suction device connected to the needle will collect several eggs from inside their follicles. During the second part of in vitro fertilization, called fertilization, the collected eggs will be taken immediately to a laboratory where they will be fertilized. Fertilization may be performed by insemination, where several sperm are mixed with the healthiest eggs or the eggs may be fertilized with sperm injected directly into them during a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. The fertilized eggs, also called embryos, will be monitored for three to five days as they begin to grow. At this time, the lab may create a hole in the zona pellucida surrounding some of the embryos. This process, called assisted hatching, will help these embryos implant in the uterus. Some of the embryos will be used right away for embryo transfer, and the rest will be frozen and stored for future use if necessary. The third part of in vitro fertilization is called embryo transfer, which is done three to five days after fertilization. During embryo transfer, a tool called a speculum will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that the doctor can see her cervix. A syringe will be loaded with fluid containing one or more of the hatched embryos. Then the syringe will be attached to a long, thin tube called a catheter. The doctor will insert the catheter into the vagina, through the cervix, and into the uterus. Once inside the uterus, the doctor will inject the embryos. Then, the catheter and speculum will be removed. The woman may continue to lie on her back for about 15 minutes. Boom, that's IVF. So, uh, let's skip all that stuff at the beginning. The embryo is called the zona. If a woman has been having trouble getting pregnant, a condition known as infertility, or it may be fertilization, maybe. Okay, so I'll give you a couple minutes just to write down what you can. Il y a les questions sur les deux pages. Puis on va écouter encore, puis c'est le temps de questions. Before in vitro fertilization, 
A woman will receive fertility medication that causes more than one egg to grow and mature in the ovaries. A man will provide a semen sample so that the healthiest sperm can be collected for fertilization. If the male partner is completely infertile, also known as sterile, or the woman doesn't have a male partner, a donor may be arranged to provide sperm for this process. In vitro fertilization consists of three main procedures, follicle aspiration, fertilization, and embryo transfer. During the first procedure, called follicle aspiration, eggs will be harvested from the ovaries. At the beginning of this procedure, an ultrasound probe will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that her doctor can view her ovaries. Inside the ovaries, the doctor will look for follicles. Each follicle is a fluid-filled sac that contains an egg. Then the doctor will insert a long, thin needle into and through the wall of her vagina and guide it to the ovary. A suction device connected to the needle will collect several eggs from inside their follicles. During the second part of in vitro fertilization, called fertilization, the collected eggs will be taken immediately to a laboratory where they will be fertilized. Fertilization may be performed by insemination, where several sperm are mixed with the healthiest eggs. Or the eggs may be fertilized with sperm injected directly into them during a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. The fertilized eggs, also called embryos, will be monitored for free sperm injection. Big hint that maybe you should be writing something down now. The fertilized eggs, also called embryos, will be monitored for three to five days as they begin to grow. At this time, the lab may create a hole in the zone of hallucida surrounding some of the embryos. This process, called assisted hatching, will help these embryos implant in the uterus. Some of the embryos will be used right away for embryo transfer, and the rest will be frozen and stored for future use if necessary. The third part of in vitro fertilization is called embryo transfer, which is done three to five days after fertilization. During embryo transfer, a tool called a speculum will be inserted into the woman's vagina so that the doctor can see her cervix. A syringe will be loaded with fluid containing one or more of the hatched embryos. Then the syringe will be attached to a long, thin tube called a catheter. The doctor will insert the catheter into the vagina, through the cervix, and into the uterus. Once inside the uterus, the doctor will inject the embryos. Then the catheter and speculum will be removed. The woman may continue to lie on her back for about 15 minutes. Okay. What are two reasons why someone might use IVF? What up? Uh, infertility. Infertility. Or. Yeah. Uh, no partner. What happens before IVF? Fertility meds. And uh, we're going to say sperm sample, but not like maybe from donor. <clears throat> what are the three steps of IVF? Uh, follicle aspiration, 
Fertilization and embryo transfer. Follicle aspiration. Aspiration. Oh my goodness. Fertilization. Embryo transfer. Um, what's the first procedure? It's through the vagina. Uh, but we're going to say, rem whoops, removal of ova. And we're going to say mature ova. From the ovaries. Ova is just a more clinical word for eggs. Um, and so, yeah, the, they, they, they use the transuterine, no, yes, transuterine ultrasound or, or, dang, what is it? The internal ultrasound to see the ovaries. Then they stick a needle uh, into the vagina, but then it goes through the vagina and uh, grabs them from the ovaries. Um, whoops. So the fancy name was intracytoplasmic sperm injection. You're not going to need to know this for a test. You don't need to memorize how to spell this. You might have to describe IVF, but you won't have to say inter intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Are all the embryos necessarily used? What up? Uh, no. no, some may be frozen. And then after they're frozen, some might be discarded. Describe briefly the third procedure. Uh, simply put, the embryos are put in the uterus. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I, okay, so the question was, is the, the, the patient awake for all this? So I would say it's, it's going to take a bit of time. So like it's, it, like it's, it, it's more than just the six minutes the video showed. Um, I would imagine for, for the follicle aspiration, I imagine they'll be awake because, I mean, there'll be some discomfort with a, a internal ultrasound. Um, but then the needle would be so incredibly small because, uh, like, it's not like ova are massive. So the needle would be so small and um, the body doesn't have a lot of, like, pain perceptors inside. So, um, like... Have, having that needle go through the vaginal wall, I would imagine is not that painful. Not having a vagina and not having it done, I can't say for sure. Um, but I, I can't imagine that'd be that painful. They might. The only reason I could see them like putting you under for that one is because they need you to be incredibly still. That's the only reason I could see, but I'm not. I'm not certain on that. That that'd be a question for a doctor or or a nurse who performs this. And then um, for the insertion, uh, not not really. Again, like the, like it it would probably be a little uncomfortable to have the catheter inserted into the cervix. But I I don't think you'd need an anesthetic for it. But again, don't don't have a cervix. Can't say for sure. Good questions. Okay. Uh, alors, la dernière partie à propos de cette partie, c'est même si on a l'assurance universelle en Saskatchewan, les technologies, les technologies reproductives ne sont pas payées, alors il faut payer soi-même. Les frais pour IVF, par exemple, peuvent dépasser 15 000 Ça fait quoi? Ça fait quoi? Ça fait quoi? 
Okay, et ça, c'est tout pour cette section. Je vous invite à...